Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey, what's going on everybody? Thank you for joining me. We are checking out the Bike Tricks Juggernaut HD right here in Mundy Park. So this is a park that is kind of like a power line park uh, here in Vancouver, BC. And it kind of goes into this foresty area. We've been riding around just a little bit uh, before we do the, uh, the review here. But inside of that park, it will kind of show you around. It kind of gets into this foresty area, comes into this gravel, and it kind of keeps going down along the power lines here. Uh, so it's a pretty, pretty cool park. I, I kind of like it a lot. And it's, as you can see, a very rainy day here. The rain is coming down, but I'm not too worried. You know, the electric bikes, they do, most of the time, they do pretty good in the rain. This one does especially well, <laughs> uh, but I'll get to that in a minute. And it occurred to me, you know what, like, we can try to run and hide and get inside a canopy, but you know what? I'm more worried about the, the camera lens being obstructed by some of the water, not so much about the bike or the performance, uh, but I want to show you how the bike does kind of uh, not so much in its element. It's not really made for rain in particular, but how it does in the loose gravel, because that's what the tires do very well. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'll tell you all about it. Okay, so this is the Bike Tricks Juggernaut HD, and one easy thing about it is that the HD within the name is for the Buffang HD motor that it's got inside of this casing and this is really the star of it all uh, So this is the HD motor which can put out a thousand watts of power Nominal and it can go up to 15 watts of peak power Which is a lot <laughs> It's a lot honestly. It's more than I can utilize on a trail like this uh, The tires do great on grip, but there's not a, a huge excessive hill for me to climb uh, in the immediate vicinity, but I did do some of that yesterday. Uh, yesterday, I'll put up a picture right here. Uh, yesterday, uh, we were out in a sunny area along the mountainside and there was a, kind of a nice lake and there was some hills around there. So I was able to take it up. So I did try it on some hills, if not shown in the video today. Uh, we ran out of time for shooting. Uh, so we had to start the next day when it's raining. So uh, this is a really slamming motor. It can do quite a bit. And it's almost a necessity to have some nice wide tires with a motor like this so you can get more traction and therefore have more uh, grip on the ground to help utilize the motor. Because spinning out is something that's very easy to do when you have a motor that's this powerful. Uh, but I do like the encasement that it's in. This, as you can see, is a nice uh, water resistant at least. Perhaps waterproof, but I'm not throwing it in a lake today. Uh, but this is... This keeps it nice and sheltered from the rain, as you can see that we're gonna be doing today. So you don't have to worry about it getting gunked up or you know, shocking or anything like that. That's really kind of a, not really a thing with electric bikes that I've ever known, at least the quality ones. Uh, so this one is encased well inside of this, which is good because it's also turned up. And some of the motors that use Bafang systems are in aftermarket. And so they have to use the existing um, framing material. And so the motor winds up being mounted lower. But in this case, the motor is literally built, or the, the frame is literally built around the motor. So the motor is able to be turned up into this position. You can kind of see it turned up there. And then as a result, it brings the weight a little bit higher, um, but it also keeps it nice and shielded so you have a larger ground clearance if you wanted to go over some you know, some pretty hairy trails with some rocks or even a log or something. Uh, your ground clearance goes from a few inches to pretty darn high. I'm not sure what that is. I'd say somewhere around 10 inches, maybe 10, 11 inches of ground clearance, which is great. Uh, while we're down here, uh, continuing on the electric system, this is a 48 volt, 12 amp hour battery that locks into position here on the down tube. This is a pretty common battery case that we've seen uh, many times. It's good, you know, it's uh, kind of run its paces and paid its dues. It's a nice battery case that has a little power button up here that kind of tells you how much battery power you have left on four little bars. So it's not terribly detailed, but it kind of gives you a ballpark. And like I said, it does lock into position. So with the key out of the bike, the battery is stuck in there and won't come out until the key goes in and then you turn that and then you have access to pull the battery out of its case. Uh, so that's a nice that's a nice battery mechanism that you have here. The controller for this bike is built into uh, the motor itself, so that's all nice and encased in there. Battery coming up here, and with the electric controls, which, as you can see, do fine in the rain. Uh, right in the middle, you have this display, a monochrome display, which tells you quite a bit. Let's turn it on here. 
So this display is a really nice one uh, that tells you your miles per hour, or in this case, uh, kilometers here in Canada. <laughs> uh, it tells you your miles per hour right here in the middle, as well as a trip set and your power level on the very bottom with a very easy to read, nice contrast. As you press the plus button, that will increase the numbers, both um, numerically it shows you one to two, but also it stacks on each other. So it goes up to five. So you got all of those stacking into position. The height of the pedal assist level is also the peak that you're able to attain through the use of the throttle as well. So for example, if you have it in level one, that'll give you a little bit of assistance for a short duration as you pedal, but also it will cap the throttle. So the throttle will go up to a certain speed. I'll just guess, and I, I haven't tested it yet, but I'll guess and say that at number one, it goes up to, uh, we'll say 10 miles an hour. And then at number two, it gives you more assistance as you pedal and it caps the throttle at say, I don't know, 12 miles an hour, you know, and so on and so forth as it goes up to level five. So this bike is set uh, for a 20 mile an hour top speed, um, but I do believe that it can go higher. Uh, I'm not gonna fiddle with it, so yeah. Okay, up here also on the display, you do have the information button, which will cycle through different metrics, going from your total to the maximum speed that you've been able to attain, your average speed, uh, an estimate as to how far you can go, um, the watts that you're consuming at a certain time, and you know, several others. The headlight button up on the grip attachment, you press and hold that, and then the headlight will turn on. There is a small indicator um, that is right next to the battery indicator. And I really like this battery indicator because it has a lot of bars on it. <laughs> that gives you much more detail than other displays or even the little tiny display that you have on the battery itself. Having all these bars, it looks like it's about 10 or so. Um, that gives you a much better idea of where you are. So the headlight indicator is what shows you when your headlight is on. This bike unfortunately doesn't have a rear light that comes with it, but the headlight is enough to be able to see a little bit of where you're going. And it operates off of the main battery pack, which is a nice feature. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that off and I'll show you the throttle working. So here you have what's called a paddle throttle or sometimes a trigger throttle or a thumb throttle works exactly the same as a twist throttle. It just changes how you interact with it, whether you use your thumb or whether you use your entire hand to grip and twist. Some people have their preferences, uh, but let's go ahead and show you. I'll do a little dance here. When you press down on that throttle, you can see the motor kind of kick in and turn the back wheel as a result. So that's the throttle. We went over the pedal assist and the display. And one last thing is the bell that's tucked into here. I don't want to miss that because it's easy to miss. <laughs> yeah, they built it right in there, so it kind of hides a little bit, so it's great. But when you're doing a review, you definitely want to make sure you get the details. <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about some of the uh, mechanical components that we have on the bike. Uh, so this has the Tektro Ares uh, mechanical disc brakes. Uh, they also have a brake cutoff inside of there, meaning that there's a, an additional small wire that comes from the brake handle. When you pull on the brake, it separates a small magnet inside of this casing. And when it does so, it sends an electric signal down to the motor to cut off power. That way, every time you hit on the brakes, the motor will stop engaging. So you're never fighting against it. That's a really good safety feature uh, that's on this bike. These are waterproof connections um, that are really stout. Uh, they do pull apart if you wanted to, but for the sake of the review, I'm going to keep it working. <laughs> but uh, these connections are pretty simple. They're kind of a uh, plug and play. So if you do get this bike or a bike like this, uh, it's actually quite common for folks to disconnect these when they're twisting the handlebars all the way around, say when they're putting the bike in the garage or perhaps in the back of a truck, and then they attempt to turn on their bike and it's unplugged. So yeah, these are really simple, really easy waterproof connections that pop out and they do so as a safety mechanism. Anyway, still going along with the mechanical features in the cockpit, you have a seven speed Shimano Alivio shifters here. Uh, so these are some trigger shifters with a windowed indicator. I actually like this, it's very easy to read. You got that big glowing, well, it doesn't really glow, that neon kind of bar that follows whichever gear that you happen to be in. So I like that a lot. Uh, even though it's not the best shifter in the world, I do like the indicator. So it's nice and clear. Coming down, you have an adjustable stem here uh, that goes from about zero to 90 degrees as you turn it. And it is turned by using a tool. So it's kind of set in place pretty snug there using what seems to be a six millimeter hex tool. We'll loosen that up and then you can adjust the stem and then you can tighten it up and then keep it where you want it to be. 
Now, so that's nice. The handlebars do have a bit of a rise to them, almost like a little bit of a faux BMX kind of thing. And that makes it easy for the handlebars to kind of rotate in that, that direction to bring the handlebars kind of closer to you if you wanted a more laid back feel. Or you can kind of extend them out a little bit the way they are. Oh, they're almost, oh, they're kind of vertical. You can extend them out a little bit if you want to stretch out and kind of get a different kind of ride there. Also coming up in the front, you have the RST Guide front fork. So this is a specific front fork that is made for wider tires. As you can tell, these are some pretty wide <laughs> uh, 26 inch diameter, but four inch wide tires. So these are some nice wide tires that are really soft and cushy. They provide some good comfort, but they also uh, do a really good job at keeping traction and keeping grip on loose terrain, such as this gravel here, especially wet gravel. Uh, but this fork, uh, like I said, is made for that. It has a nice wide crown to it where you have the mount for the metal fenders, which is a great feature. Brownie points for me on metal fenders. And also the headlight mount is right here and also has a reflector um, on the mount for the headlight, which is nice. Uh, I think a reflector is required. Even though lots of bikes have headlights, it's still legally required to have a head, uh, reflector in a lot of cases. Uh, but this is a spring-loaded fork with an adjustable um, preload and a lockout that you have both of those controls here uh, on the top of the fork, which is fairly easy to get to when you're riding the bike um, in motion. And you do have the hub right here in the center of the wheel. And this hub has 13 gauge spokes. Doesn't have a quick release, which is too bad, uh, but you can still get these off with what appears to be a 15 millimeter uh, wrench. We'll take off these little nuts and then you can get it out. So it's a pretty common tool. Uh, most toolboxes have something like that. So it's not foreign at all but nonetheless you can't do it with a quick release it does have the uh, metal mounts for the metal fenders or right here on the bottom of the fork and the punch outs within the wheels they make a really good look but they're also actually made to save weight i learned uh, you do have some pretty good reflectors i like the way that these reflectors mount personally um, onto the spokes here i've seen other ones that kind of wedge in uh, those still work but i like these ones a lot the nice and wide ones that you can clip on to you know, they get a nice wide breadth to show the reflector there. Let's talk about the brakes for one sec. These are mechanical disc brakes. Uh, and these are 160 millimeter rotors that you have here. These mechanical disc brakes have a vertical pull, meaning that this, when you squeeze on the cable up on the handlebars, then this will extend, or sorry, this will contract this arm here and it will squeeze together with the pistons, the little brake pads that will squeeze the disc. Disc brakes are very nice to have on an electric bike of any electric bike. And when you have an electric bike that's this big and also this powerful, disc brakes are a must, an absolute must. You know, there are a better set of brakes or a better style of brakes called hydraulic disc um, that would be especially nice. So if you're looking at if you're looking at this bike or a bike like this, oh dogs chasing the ducks. <laughs> I wonder if he'll get them. I doubt it. <laughs> Anyways. If you're looking at this bike or a bike like this, you can compare different models and brands at electricbikereview.com, by the way. If you're looking at a bike like this, I definitely consider hydraulic disc brakes if you plan on using the bike in some fairly rough terrain. When you're doing something like this that's fairly easy going, it's not that big of a thing because you don't need the stopping power if you're going down a very steep hill. So if you plan on going down steep hills, going really fast, which does include on the road, then yeah, I definitely consider some hydraulic disc brakes for a bike that has this much power. <laughs> and that's really kind of the, the uh, that's really the crux of it, that if you plan on using an HD motor, which can put out an immense amount of power for going up an immense hill, that means you probably want some good brakes to go down that same immense hill. Uh, but continuing on to the back of the bike, you have an 11 to 32 tooth uh, gearing in the back. This is a Shimano 7 speed with a tiny gear being 11 teeth and the big one being 32 teeth. And like I said, the Shimano Alivio um, derailleur back here that's controlled up at the front and cable actuated, which is great. Works great. I've used it personally on a bike that I've owned for many years and I like that system a lot. Up to the front of the drivetrain, you have a 42 tooth chain ring up on the front. Uh, with also this plastic guard that keeps the chain in line. So if you plan on doing some pretty rough terrain, this will help keep your chain uh, in line with that single gear that you have up here. 170 millimeter cranks go up to the metal pedals. So these pedals are made of metal. That's kind of a tongue twister, um, but they have the reflector on the side as well as the pins to kind of keep your shoes in place. I like these pedals. They might be heavy, they might be common, but by golly, I like them. 
uh, coming up top, you do have a pretty stiff, solid seat post, uh, which doesn't have a lot of cushion to it. So if you wanted to, you know, kind of soften up the ride, you might want to get a suspension seat post as an added accessory. But truth be told, you do have some suspension with, of course, the front suspension with the front fork, as well as the tires, actually. The tires are nice and cushy. So, you know, if you're gonna get a bike like this, you know, try it out for a little while, see if you like it. And if you wanna soften it up a little bit, adding a suspension seat post right in here would make a world of a difference, believe me. Uh, the saddle itself uh, is pretty good. It is a faux leather wrapped uh, Velo saddle. It has a pretty good uh, footprint. I'd say it's about eight inches wide and it's got some gel inside there. It feels pretty good. You know, even though it does have a fairly slim uh, profile to it, it feels nice. I, I like it, so. Um, the back rack here uh, bolts onto the frame uh, through a few attachment points, uh, both on the lower side and also on the upper side. Uh, this rack uh, is a little bit wider, so it's thicker to handle additional weight, but as a result you may have a pannier bag with tinier hooks that can't fit over there. You can, in some cases, kind of widen out the hooks with a pair of pliers to get over there. Um, but if you do have a set of pan bags and you're shopping for an electric bike, be aware that there are different sizes of width of the metal uh, for different racks. And this one is also wider from a profile standpoint because it's meant to go over those wide tires. So wide platform, also a little bit wider for the rail itself. So definitely shop for a set of bags that can accommodate uh, this size of rack. I think that's about everything that we have to go over for the bike on all the specifications. Let's go ahead and give it a ride and show you how it does. One thing I forgot to mention about this uh, electric system is that the HD motor uses a cadence-based pedal assist system, uh, meaning that it gives out power based on how many rotations that it's counting from the crank, and that's done internally, of course. Uh, so it's a pretty easygoing system. Uh, it doesn't give out power like super immediately the way that you would see on like a kind of like a really well-tuned, uh, lightweight um, electric mountain bike. A lot of those have a torque-based pedal assist system, which is great for that application. Uh, but for something like this, it's meant for kind of smoothing out, um, kind of smoothing out the ride, making it pretty effortless. And that's kind of why people get a monstrous motor <laughs> to begin with, is because they want it to seem kind of effortless. And so it's a really good pairing with the fat tire bikes. I'm doing great here on some pretty loose gravel. You can kind of see it. I'll go ahead and turn the camera around a little bit. Yeah, I'm going about, oh, what is this, about 13 miles an hour or so. Um, going through this wet and loose gravel like it's, you know, like it's a breeze, just cuts like a knife. Uh, so yeah, this, this feels like a really good application. I could probably stay here for a while. Okay guys, thanks for checking out the Bike Tricks Juggernaut HD with me. I wish I could stay here a lot longer. It, uh, it's very picturesque out here. Uh, but yeah, it does really good on the loose and wet uh, gravel that we did today. But also yesterday when it was more dry, I got to take it up a hill in a different area when I was test riding this and the rest of the Bike Tricks lineup. And that HD motor puts out a ton of power, so it was able to climb the hill very, very easily. I should have filmed it yesterday. Oh well. 
but yeah, you can check out this uh, bike, the Juggernaut HD, along with the other bikes that we did from the Bike Tricks lineup, including the Cuddy, the Stunner, the Stunner X, and the Bike Tricks full suspension bike, uh, the Juggernaut FS. So yeah, we have a full write-up and review for this bike and all of those that you can find on electricbikereview.com. And if you'd like, you can go to the forums on our site and participate there, hang out, and you know, kind of ask a question if you need to. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining us. Ride safe.